times when this happens. Fun times when anything like this happens on other orchids. Fun times when we see keikis on our orchids. And yes, I say fun times, even though that sometimes keikis are a sign that something is not quite right and the mother plant is under duress and for that reason is producing keikis. But still fun times. Because even if an orchid is producing keikis, because it is under duress, we still have that orchid. We may be starting again, but we have not lost the orchid. Orchids that do not produce keikis when under duress and subsequently leave our collection, well, they're gone. But orchids that produce keikis, fun times. I'm already way into this video. You can tell how I love the subject of keikis. But I'm going to take a minute here and thank you for clicking on the video and do a little housekeeping. Things that YouTube likes as well. So. Not only do I make videos about what I see happening in my collection that I could consider interesting, but I take a closer look at many subjects and words that are being used in the orchid hobby. These words are scrutinized in videos and you can find them in a playlist called Orchid Lingo. Then, on topics that are of interest for all kinds of setups and media, be they inorganic or organic, controlled environments for growing orchids or al fresco, I have a playlist titled The Masterclass, which focuses on topics in greater depth. A deep dive, so to speak, and also quite detailed. And then, I have videos like these, where I take questions from the comments under my videos and answer them in a video such as this. Not all questions are requests because sometimes the answer is easily written in a reply. However, some questions that I believe could be of interest even while answered in the comments, I make a video out of because there may be a chance that the topic could be of interest to more viewers. So here we are today talking about what I would advise when it comes to allowing a Phalaenopsis keiki to spike and bloom out because it's always something asked the question in my spikes versus roots video and they came up with a wonderful thought keiki to keiki to keiki and eventually having all keikis mature enough to spike that daisy chain of keikis in bloom while still attached to the mother plant and well what a visual personally i have not seen that before because many times we see a keiki allow the roots to get long enough and then eager beavers detach the keiki and pot it up well that is how I have operated in the past and me thinks that many do the same. If it's always something can manage to get a mature Phalaenopsis to turn into a cakey machine that allows for daisy chain culture and blooming, I would love to be around to see that. My enthusiasm for cakeys is obvious, clearly. That was a long-winded intro, but I comfort myself that I have timestamps in the description for everyone who prefers to skip ahead. However, if you joined in with my cakey hype and want to explore the channel further, get your questions and requests in. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like the video. And as cakeys that are detached from the mother plant can then be gifted and shared with friends, how about taking that inspiration and share this video with friends? I appreciate the support and thank you so much in advance. Now, I don't have much footage for what I want to talk about, but I hope that what follows will be informative enough and helpful. First of all, while a keiki is still attached to a healthy mother plant, the keiki can grow and bloom out without any danger to the mother plant. However, you have to make sure that you're caring for the mother plant as if you're caring for two orchids. As the keiki grows, it is drawing energy from the mother plant, and the mother plant is also focusing on the survival of the keiki through the flower spike. Any lack of sufficient fertilizer will appear on the mother plant before it does on the keiki. In form of rapid leaf absorption, that is the first sign. Then other signs would be that the mother plant is not growing normally in the production of new roots. And the new leaves will also grow smaller than any previous leaves that grew prior to the arrival of the keiki. Make sure to sustain the mother plant so that both keiki and mother plant thrive. A healthy mother plant will also continue to grow spikes if it has enough fertilizer and supplements. And it may throw out a spike with another keiki on it because sometimes these complex hybrids are genetically built that way. Not all Phalaenopsis grow keikis. Usually, as mentioned previously, a Phalaenopsis under duress will grow a keiki to ensure its survival. So, 
if you have a super healthy phalaenopsis and never get cakies on it, then it could be for two reasons. Your phalaenopsis is happy and its life does not feel threatened, or the genetic mumbo jumbo of your complex fal does not have it in it to form cakies, which is not a bad thing. Just as a healthy phalaenopsis that loves to grow cakies is not a bad thing if the mother plant is healthy. As you can see though, I have a species phalaenopsis. Just to give an example that to my understanding this phalaenopsis pulchra is not under duress, but some species phalaenopsis just have it in their DNA to grow cakies. If I had given my pulchra enough light, then we may have seen some blooms. However, as this one is still in limbo in my collection, it does not have the light levels it requires to bloom and for that reason we have a keiki. Meanwhile, pulchras are known for growing keikis, so I'm not concerned. The example with my pulchra could be the start of a keiki daisy chain of blooms. Time will tell and time will also tell what I do with that keiki and obviously space permitting. However, let's get back to the care of the keiki on a complex fowl while it is still attached to the mother plant. Know that while it is getting all its provisions via the umbilical cord that is the flower spike, it will also start growing its own roots and they are going to grow every which way. If enough humidity is provided for the roots of the keiki to function and support the keiki, helping the mother plant out a little bit, then the aerial roots will be able to take up that moisture and just keep growing. In a home environment, however, those kind of humidity levels are usually very rare, so the roots may grow well for a certain period of time, but eventually stop as they grow further and further away from the keiki. If possible, misting the roots of the keiki should be done daily, and while they can be misted with some fertilizer and supplements, the concentration has to be super low if the humidity is not high enough for the roots to stay damp long enough to absorb the nutrients. And by high humidity, I mean at least 85%. Any nutrient solution that were to be applied in form of misting would dry up far too soon before the roots even had a chance to absorb anything and salts would start to burn the velamen. Keep in mind that velamen on aerial roots is much tougher to penetrate compared to the velamen of roots in a pot even if the mother plant is cultivated in a wet dry cycle. This sounds ridiculously low, but I would not go above 50 parts per million of any nutrient solution when it comes to misting aerial roots on keikis or even the aerial roots on the mother plant. Meanwhile, the humidity in my climate is non-existent, so that is where I'm getting my numbers from. The daily misting with plain, clean, low parts per million water is a must. This will help in the velamen of the roots to become a little more receptive to water absorption sooner instead of waiting for too long before doing any misting. Allow any new roots that grow from the keiki to grow at least 6 centimeters before starting to mist, even though the first couple of weeks the roots will not show any signs of greening up Eventually, they will. It takes time, but misting at this stage will make the new velamen grow with less repelling characteristics than waiting too long, something I like to call the Teflon effect. The sooner you start misting without risking anything that could happen or be a detriment to the crown, the base of the keiki, the better, and six centimeters for me is quite a happy margin to start getting that velamen to soften up as it develops. Back to what it's always something said, daisy chain keikis and them in bloom. Based on the DNA in the phalaenopsis, the keiki may eventually grow another keiki from a flower spike and so on and so forth. And then the care increases with each new keiki. Allowing a keiki to bloom out is of course no issue at all. Just keep an eye out on the health of the mother plant. That is not just a mother plant, it is the mothership. Without the mothership being super healthy, the keiki will continue to be healthy, but the daisy chain keiki effect will not be sustainable long term. So protect the mothership at all costs. <laughs> There's something though that I want to mention in this video and I appreciate you for still being here. Thank you so very much. But while on the subject of Phalaenopsis keikis, 
it would be remiss of me to not mention those keikis that get separated from the mother plant and then potted up as an independent plant. If that newly separated keiki were to spike within the first year of it being on its own, that could be a stress spike. That spike could be a sign that the keiki is now fighting for its survival and needs to bloom to be pollinated, etc, etc. So, depending on the state of the root system in the pot and the overall health of the keiki while it was settling into its new pot, you may have to consider cutting the first spike off and not allowing the keiki to bloom out. And this is my margin where things can be safe or a risk. If the keiki has not produced any new roots of its own after being potted up, then there is no guarantee that the older roots, which were accustomed to being aerial, are functioning properly to nurture the keiki. There may be a communication block in the system that cannot be detected with the naked eye, so even nice and healthy looking leaves are not a sign that the keiki is doing well. New root growth of said keiki in the pot and then a spike, that is what you need to look out for before letting a keiki bloom out for the first time after having been separated from the mother plant. Why do I say that with such conviction? Because the keiki in the pot on the left is growing a spike and woohoo, I'm going to let it bloom out because this little trooper has been through the ringer for three years straight. For the first year as a separated plant, it was my test keiki for using Colomy as per Colomy's instructions. And it hated every month of that experience, just as I did during the first 12 months. This little keiki wanted to bloom time and time again, and there was not active root growth ever while in the colony but boy did this keiki want to bloom and each time i cut the spike however now it has settled into the setup that it likes and has grown roots in the second year out of the colony is starting on more roots and now it has a spike now it is ready and healthy enough to bloom and we will see walter jr blooms if the klutz here talking doesn't make a mistake along the way <laughs> fingers crossed which brings me to the point of when to cut a spike, any spike, not just Phalaenopsis spikes. Even though a keiki is using up considerable energy to grow a spike and we want to conserve that energy as best as possible so that the keiki does not collapse on us, we have to wait for the right time before we cut the spike and that is waiting until the buds have formed and are separating themselves away from the spike. That takes a couple of months and it is very energy consuming, but the premature cutting of a spike can result in the orchid starting on another spike, as was the case with Walter Jr. It will continue to do that just because it is fighting for survival, so it is best to sit out the time while the spike forms until the buds separate and then cut it off. It's better to do that than to do it prematurely and have the orchid send out another spike and have to wait all over again. And in cases like these, it is important to cut the spike right at the base so as not to leave a single node available for the spike to then put energy into possibly branching. This is what they do to survive. They will try anything and everything. And our timing, cutting the spike prematurely, will make them continue, continue, and it just draws more and more energy out of them instead of them just settling in and focusing on what should come next according to our perception, not theirs. <laughs> But the good thing is as well, not all keikis will bloom within the first season of being separated from the mother plants, but many will. That is just how complex hybrids do. And if you have chosen to separate the keiki off the mother plant to grow it on independently, care for it as you would any other seedling. Keikis are seedlings once removed from the mother plant. They have to be cared for as such lower fertilizer levels and to some degree lower light levels until they settle in and get their grow on. You will be able to tell when your keiki is coming out of its seedling stage by the size of the roots it eventually grows. We focus a lot on the leaves but in actual fact we need to look at the roots. Once you see a root size that resembles that of the mother plant and it looks ridiculous in the proportion to the size of your keiki, 
And that is when you will know your keiki is coming out of seedling status and you can start to anticipate that the foliage will follow suit the following season. Without the right size of roots, the keiki cannot grow the foliage according to the DNA of the mother plant. So watch out for how big and ridiculously <laughs> sized they look and then watch out for the next season and be ready to care for your keiki now as an almost mature phalaenopsis and that is the current status quo of walter jr and the keiki from maximilian i don't want to call him maximilian jr he's not maximilian 2.0 i'm gonna call this keiki champion meanwhile even though both of them are in spike champion here had the best life going straight into Lekka and self-watering and well not ever did it perform as vigorously as Walter Jr even though Walter Jr was set back a year because these two keikis in the pots were separated from their mother plant in the same season and that just proves that not all complex phalaenopsis hybrids are the same. The behavior of the mother plant will replicate itself as to how the keiki behaves because they are identical in every single way. So I hope I had enough footage to make this video interesting and covered the subject efficiently enough. And if not, I thank YouTube for the comments section because let's keep the conversation going on down there. Like I said at the beginning, keikis! <laughs> for a greedy orchid grower like me, give me keikis. And that includes, let's talk keikis. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. I so appreciate it and thank you once again in advance. Have yourself a fabulous day on one condition that you stay safe. Please take care. Bye.